Hi, and welcome to my vegan experiment. My name is Kat, and today's video is all about scuba diving gear for you. If you're interested in anything to do with scuba diving, veganism, conservation, health, please feel free to subscribe so I can keep you updated every Wednesday. Uh, after you got your wetsuit, uh, you can get a whole bunch of really fun accessories. Yay! So I'm just going to show you some of the accessories I have and I have found very useful throughout my years of diving. So, uh, number one thing is our torch. So this is our... Oh, I should really rinse this out. It's getting a little rusty. This is my big blue torch. Pretty standard. Not the best torch. Not very expensive. I'm not... I don't make a lot of money, so like I had to get a relatively cheap torch. As a diving instructor, you really do not make a lot of money okay and this is not a career you get into because of money but it is the best job and it's one of the most rewarding jobs I can imagine having just seeing people die for the first time and seeing their eyes light up when they see when they see anemones or, or a turtle for the first time it's just oh it's just amazing anyway so yeah so the, this, this is my torch it's great um, you can take this on all dives you can look into little nooks and crannies and see what kind of sea life is down there as well as night dives which are fantastic however you have to be more than an advanced diver to do a night dive oh and wrecks for wrecks, you definitely want to have a torch as well because, yeah, it's dark in wrecks, so you want to be able to see where you're going. So torches is um, one of the biggest dive accessories I would recommend um, if you are if you got the rest of the stuff. Another thing is uh, really handy is having a little pair of gloves. These are just my basic Adrena ones. I have lost my beloved Scrim Pro ones, but these work just as fine. They have this little material on there, which is really grippy. Um, so it's quite handy when I'm dealing with, you know, latches and things. Gloves are really important. Now this is not so you can touch coral. You never touch coral, never touch a wreck, don't touch stuff underwater. Uh, but if you, uh, well, for heat retention, one. But also if you do accidentally graze on something, you do not want to get cuts from coral. The most painful thing Okay, not the most painful. One of the most painful things I've experienced is getting um, grazed on fire coral because I was pushing a student out of the way from hitting the coral. And because I didn't have gloves on, it just burnt my whole hand and it, it stung like a bee sting for about uh, five days. So that was not pleasant. So wearing gloves is really great just uh, for protection purposes as well. And in some places, like on the dive in Julian's rocks, you actually do need to hold on to rocks because the current is so strong. So there, uh, and on many wreck dives, they won't let you dive without gloves. So it's a good thing to have. Plus they're really small to pack. Okay, next thing is I have a reel. Again, not the most important thing if you're a recreational diver. However, if you are getting into your search and recovery, if you're getting into rescue diving, dive master, you definitely need a reel. Reels are great for laying out lines, for measuring distances that you need to get your students to do anything. They're good if it's bad visibility for potentially finding your way back. You can like lay a line of where you go. If you lose anything, you can use the reel to do a circular search technique, which is great. What else? Also, if you ever get into scientific diving and you do coral surveys, you need a line to lay along the bottom. So yeah, scuba diving is just a really cool like technique. Anyway, okay, next thing, uh, slate. Definitely one of the most important things. Ugh, this is my slate. As you can see, I still have, um, I still have some, some writing on here. I have Hope She's Okay. Uh, she went up with Jess. She was cold. And then here it just says, I'm a manta whisperer. So it must have been, <laughs> what well, must have been one of the most wonderful dives I've had in my life where I was dancing with the manta rays. But yeah, this one opens up like this. It has an attached pen. Woo! So pencil is really good to write on underwater. And then it clips on. So as a diving instructor, it's really great to be able to communicate with my students if there's something a bit more technical, or if I need to tell them, you know, take a few deep breaths, you're okay, or congratulations, you've become an open water diver. But also this is great for recreational diving if you are diving with a relatively new buddy and you don't have that underwater signal communication just right, yeah, you can let them know what you're thinking. Like me, me and my uh, best friend Robin, shout out to you when we were doing our instructor development course i looked at her underwater and i was like and she was like 
Now for you guys that might not be clear, but that means let's have sushi train for lunch. So <laughs> yeah, you can definitely develop your whole language underwater, especially with people you know well. Robin is amazing. She's currently in Bermuda kicking butt. Uh, she's been traveling for three years and I'm really excited she's going to be on my podcast talking all about uh, the views of the oceans around the world that she's traveled, the amount of plastic she's seen, things like that. So keep keep your eyes peeled. Anyway, next thing. Whoa! These are ooh, these are various slates uh, with with like fishy fishy things. They're great to know because uh, you can actually learn to identify fish with these. So this is uh, from Pro Dive Cans. This is, I got this on my open water course, so you can see I've kept this for ten years. Like pretty solid. So these are pretty great to get. You can get a whole pack online. Again, links to every. Now the the last thing, and this is a bit of a point of contention for some people. Uh, this is my jingle and I exclusively, or I try to, I try to exclusively only use this when I am teaching and when I need to grab the attention of my students. In, in certain cases, they can be emergencies, so I'll need to get their attention really quickly where I need everyone to, to come with me, follow me if there is, you know, a student having trouble or anything like that. But a lot of people aren't fans of this because it does make a lot of noise. I mean, I don't know what that sounds like on camera, but underwater you can hear this from, I want to say kilometer, but uh, anyone on your dive trip is going to hear you jingling this wherever they are. Which is awesome in some ways, because when I was diving around the SS Young Gala off Kalinda in 2013, I don't know, I was doing advanced course and I had we had just finished some skills with peak performance buoyancy and there was a humpback whale swimming by. Just a casual little humpback whale, like, whoa, what's up? And I went nuts. I mean, I started shaking this thing like there's no tomorrow. But luckily, so many of my students were actually on the boat and they all like perked up. They're like, that's cat, what's going on? And because they know me and they, they know I don't shake it that incessantly in, in any normal situation, they were like, either she's dying or there's something insanely cool out there. So, most of my students who looked up and looked around actually saw the whale because believe it or not they're silent yeah i i don't know that seems really counterintuitive i know underwater like you don't hear things that well but like a thing that big for it to be silent is just mind-blowing like genuinely i don't i don't even know like how to how to deal with that anyways uh but yeah so all the people who looked up they saw the whale. All the people who didn't, didn't see the whale. So do with that what you may. 